Hello, and welcome to this video presentation. My name is Paul Brett. I'm a senior software support analyst supporting the Transformation Extender product from IBM. The topic for this video is using the ITX Design Studio for XML processing. Feel free to reach out to me on popular social media channels at Paul Brett IBM. In this practical demonstration, we will show how to use the Design Studio to complete the following steps. We will create an XML schema visually. We will then generate some test XML data from that schema. We will validate the XML data using the tools in the Eclipse Design Studio. Next, we will build a map input card from the XML schema. And finally, we will run the map to validate the input XML prior to any mapping. We're going to start this demonstration in the ITX 1012 Design Studio, and I'm going to create a new extender project. I'm going to call the project XML1. And in my Windows File Explorer, we have now an XML1 folder in my workspace directory. In my design studio, I'm going to change the perspective from the current transformation extender development perspective to the XML perspective. I'm going to expand my project and you'll note that I have no files currently. I'm going to right click and choose that I'm going to build a new schema. I'm going to call my schema input.xsd And here we get to build the schema in a visual style. So let's start with the root element. I right click in elements and choose add element, call it root. Then I right click, change the type to a new type and I create it as a local anonymous type. If we switch to the source view temporarily, you will see that the XML schema is slowly built up for you but we're going to stick in the design view for now and go on to the next step. If I double click root, I now get to put in all of the objects that are a child of root. So if I right click here and choose add element, I'm going to put in record. So my XML schema is going to define that there are multiple records. So record itself cannot just be an, a string, it needs to be yet another local anonymous type. So let's right click, set type, choose new, and create as local anonymous type again. I'm also going to set the multiplicity at this point because I want multiple records to be in my XML file, and I'm going to go for zero or more in the options here. If I double click the record type, in the header there. Under the record type, we can now define the children of the object record. Right click, choose add element, and let's put in some elements here. Name, which I'm going to have as a string. Age, which I'm going to change from a string to an int. I'm going to put address in here, and that's just going to be one string. And this gives us some flexibility in our input data that we may be using to create an example map that gives us some flexibility over perhaps, say, a comma separated values record type that we wouldn't normally have. So that will do for now. If I save my file, switch to the source temporarily, you can see it's built up some lines of schema for me. Back to design and we'll close that. The next step is to create some input XML against that schema. Now there are two ways to do this. One of them is using ITX itself and an output card and build up the records. But there is another way. We can just right click, choose new XML file, which I'm going to call input.xml. 
and rather than saying that to create the XML from scratch, we're going to create the XML from an XML schema file. Click Next, we point to our schema. Click Next, we say that we want to create optional attributes, we want to create optional elements, and we're going to limit the optional elements depth to 20. If I click Finish here, it's now created my XML file for me, and if we switch to source, you can see that it's created one record with a name of TNS colon name, an age of zero, and an address of TNS colon address. Now this is pretty terrible for input data, but it gives us a nice place to start from to be able to cut and paste and create further records. So let's do that now. Let's overwrite this first record with some useful information. And there you can see I've typed out a fake address for Steve Rogers. Now, the advantage of XML is that the data can contain new line characters and doesn't mess up our validation. And when we bring that file into uh, ITX for processing, those new line characters will remain and they can either be stripped out or we can use mapping techniques to make these into individual fields. So we have one record. Let's now copy and paste that and make a second record. So I've given Bruce Banner a completely different age and a completely different address. But how do we know all of this is actually valid data? So let's just save the XML at this point and right click the XML file and we can use the validate option here. This has validated successfully against the schema. The schema is defined in the XML, input.xsd and no errors have been found. If errors had been found, they would be displayed in the problems window. So let's purposefully introduce an error into this data. Let's remove the O of record there and save and right click and validate again. It says here validation complete, two errors were discovered. We'll expand those errors and we'll drag this over Okay, so it says here that invalid content was found starting with element TNS colon RECRD. So the word record is obviously corrupted there. That's what it's picked up on. And it's also come up with a second issue that TNS RECRD has not been terminated by a matching closing tag. Well, the matching closing tag is there, but it's spelt correctly. So let's go and fix our problem. Save, right click, Validate again, and you'll note that the problem lines disappear. So there we go, that's our input XML validated using the XML validation feature of the XML perspective as part of the design studio. Let's switch back now to ITX and do the same validation using a transformation extender map. Back in the Transformation Extender perspective, first thing I'm going to do is create a new map source file. I'm going to call it map source one. And within my map source, I'm going to create a new map called new map one. And then within my new map, I'm going to create a new input card and I'm going to call that card in one. The type tree I'm going to use is I'm going to natively use the schema. And as soon as I click OK here, an MTX file will be created. Let me just show you the Windows File Explorer. There is no MTX file there currently. I click OK. Complete the rest of the card. Use XSD as the root object. And now if we switch back to our file explorer view, you'll note that there is an input.mtx file, which is basically the type tree. Okay, here's our map. We have the schema used as a type tree. We are reading the file input.xml. This map is ready to run. So we can save, we can build, and we can run and we can see that map has completed successfully. If I expand the miscellaneous section, there is no output file produced because there is no output card for this map. If 
Uh, there are no traces produced at the moment because I haven't turned any of those on. But I can be reasonably confident that that input.xml file is valid because I've validated it using the XML perspective and the validate command. And I've also validated it using my ITX map here. Next step, let's create an output card to show you what I meant with the formatting of the data. First thing I'm going to do is just grab a type tree that I'm going to use. We have generic.mtt here, I've copied from another project. And I'm going to create an output card called out1. The type I'm going to pick from this generic is the file type and I'm going to be writing to output.txt. Now normally I would build a functional map at this point to run each record on the input side. So let's do that now. The functional map is going to be called f underscore each record and I drag the record object in here to complete the raw. Right click, functional map wizard, create, close. Here's my functional map. I'm going to switch to composition view to see it in hierarchical format. And if I double click here, we can see that we have a text item that we're going to populate from each record. Now I'm going to ignore the name and age for now and just drag in the address. And if I go over to my executable map and save and build and run, that's run successfully. If I now expand miscellaneous, you'll note that I have an output.txt file, which should be the two addresses one after the other. But the key thing to note is that the addresses have retained their formatting from the XML, the new lines specifically. And that's the end of my demonstration with XML data and the validation tools available from the Design Studio. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my video presentation. If you found the content interesting and informative, please hit that like button. Perhaps leave me a comment. Consider subscribing to my YouTube channel as I release content such as this on a regular basis. Feel free to reach out to me on popular social media channels at Paul Brett IBM. Thank you.